tonight, we're joined by uh, Travis Braden, driver of the number 26 Platinum Motorsports Pro Late Model. He's the current points leader in the JEG CRA All-Stars Tour. Um, he just won the Fall Brawl this past weekend at Lucas Oil Raceway at Indianapolis. He's had several polls and some top five finishes this season. And uh, last year, he won the prestigious Snowball Derby at Five Flags down in Pensacola, Florida. He's also a past winner of the Winchester 400 in 2016 and his first uh, ARCA start in 2015, also at Lucas Oil Raceway. Um, Travis, it seems like you're you're bringing some good momentum into the uh, uh, Pinty Short Track U.S. Nationals this weekend. How are you feeling coming into the race? Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's that's kind of the buzzword on our team right now is just momentum. Uh, We've always had strong performances uh, really everywhere over the past few years. But um, you know how it goes in racing, right? There's, a, there's times when you're competitive and it just doesn't come together for, for the trophies. And finally, I think right now we're on the, on the track to, to keep winning the rest of this year, which is great because we're going into the short track nationals, uh, all these other big events coming up in the fall and in the winter. So it's a really good time to get hot. So now you raced here in 2017 in both pro late model and super late model. What do you remember from that event? Ah, uh, man, I, I remember thinking, you know, this is pretty incredible. Um, these cars are so so light compared to uh, the NASCAR Cup Series or even the trucks and Xfinity cars. Uh, a little bit less power overall, but because of that weight difference, we just carry a lot of speed, um, something that we don't do. You know, these cars don't race anywhere like this typically. So it's, um, you know, for me, I had been fortunate to race some on the bigger tracks in the ARCA Series, but uh, for most drivers, it, it was something incredibly new uh, and it was a thrill. So we, we had some misfortune. We got in, in some wrecks, but uh, we had some, some fun. Happy to be back this year. Uh, we'll go over to Heather Williams with WCYB for, for some questions for you. Go ahead, Heather. Hey, Travis. Um, Anthony, obviously they're listed off a, an impressive resume and you've won some of the biggest races out there. What would it mean to, to add Bristol to that list? Hey Heather, thanks. Thanks for the question. Um, honestly, you know, it would it would mean a lot. This is obviously a new thing for late models to be racing at Bristol. I've only come here once in 2017, and um, as I just mentioned, we ended up not finishing either race, but we had two strong performances that we probably could have contended for a win. So, you know, given all that stuff, it'd be really cool to win. It'd be really cool to go on victory lane on top of a building. That's the only place I can think of where you'd be in such a unique victory lane. Uh, really cool, obviously, celebration, a really cool trophy. So tons of reasons why I would love to win this year. Also, you, since you mentioned you've been here before, uh, what was your first impression? I mean, everybody always has a reaction when they drive into Bristol. What was your first impression of the track? It, it's, like I said, I think the buzzword here is incredible because I've been to Bristol a few times in the past just to watch, but uh, the first time, you know, driving, your hauler into the infield, um, you know, an empty track. There's no one there yet. It's just an empty infield. It's a pretty incredible feeling knowing that you're going to be racing on that track. Um, and then getting, you know, getting in the seat for the first time in a late model is, is incredible just because of how fast these cars are and the, and the corner speed that you carry. So uh, it's a real thrill. It's, it's why I think this, this has all come together, I would assume. Uh, the short track nationals because everyone loves the idea of racing at Bristol and it's turned into something really cool. Thanks. Thank you. Travis, what'll be your strategy this year? Um, having a year, I haven't experienced Bristol before in a couple of different types of cars. What'll be your strategy in the pro late model this year? I think the strategy is just, you know, kind of be smart and, um, you know, obviously with any racing, it, you got to have your car, um, performing the best you can. So number one, you have to do a good job in practice and get your car prepared properly as a driver with your team. Um, but just being smart in the race, you know, it's a really fast place. Things happen quickly. And if you aren't paying attention, you could, you know, you could wind up in a wreck or, or ending your day, something simple. So um, that's my strategy. I, you know, I, I feel really confident we'll be performing uh, well enough to compete for the win. So at that point, you know, the philosophy for me is just don't make mistakes. And talk a little bit about the competition in the uh, pro late model, uh, the, the JEG CRA All-Stars Tour. You got Cody Coughlin, um, 
Stephen Nassi, you know, there's a lot of heavy hitters in that, in that class that you race with um, throughout the year. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the Jag CR all-star store um, is just, you know, honestly just as competitive, if not more competitive at times than the super series races. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of that's due to the fact that it's a lot of us race in both series. So, uh, very competitive. I will say too, you know, being that we run the crate engines in this class, uh, the playing field is a lot more even. And you have less horsepower, so you know it just kind of closes everything up and makes the competition really tough, and uh, puts on some intense racing, especially at a place like Bristol where you're almost, you know, almost wide open. So everyone's just really, you know, really aggressive, basically. Uh, let's see. Alan Gregory may have joined us. Do you have a question for Travis Allen? I think he was having some problems. I don't know if he's on here or not. Um, you were talking about some of the cool stuff uh, if you win Bristol. Um, plus, you get a, a BMS Gladiator sword. How, how cool would that be to have one of those swords? Yeah, honestly, the first year I came, I somehow missed the, uh, missed the note that that was going to be what the trophy was. And so, we had, like I said, we had two, two cars capable of winning both of those races on the inaugural race and both fell short because of misfortune and then when i saw those trophies you know i was like man that would have been cool and we've got to find a way to go back one year to try again so really looking forward to it this year and that's a big part of honestly you know it'd be pretty cool to be up there on victory lane with that sword and um you know how many people have gotten to do that in history not very many uh, speaking of uh, big trophies and, and different trophies, how has your life changed after winning the Snowball Derby? I mean, your name is now on that Tom Dawson trophy with like names like Chase Elliott, Kurt, or Kyle Busch, uh, John Hunter Nemechek, Noah Gregson, Eric Jones. I mean, Daryl Waltrip's on that, uh, you know, has won right. that race before. I mean, that's a kind of a cool, cool uh, trophy to hang your hat on. Yeah, you know, I, I, I've answered that question a few times and, and every time I really think about it. And what's so cool to me is um, if you look at basically just the last decade in particular, right, from 2010 to 2020 or 2019, um, on that 10-year history, you have every single driver is competing in NASCAR in the Cup Series to some extent even, um, except for me, unfortunately for me. But, but just that puts you in that category, right, and that puts my team – in the category with teams like uh, KBM that Eric Jones and Kyle drove for. Um, and just Chase Elliott, of course, has, you know, a lot of resources and always had very competitive equipment. It puts, puts my team in that category, puts my name in that category. And it's, it's a special feeling, you know, to be one of the guys that's, that's kind of more just a short track racer that actually was able to compete and get on that list. Uh, I think Alan Gregory is now with us. Uh, go ahead, Alan. Got a couple hey, of questions. Travis. Travis, yeah. Yeah, I have two questions there for you, man. Um, first off, did you watch the races at BMS last week, and what did you learn? And also, growing up in West Virginia, where did you develop an interest in um, NASCAR motorsports at? I did see some. I didn't get to sit and watch all the races from start to finish, but, um, you know, it looked like for, for a little bit of a change this year, the bottom really um, was really pretty strong for most of those races, uh, at least in the, in the first half of them. So. You know, that was unique to me. I think when we were here in the past, the bottom was good in 2017, but it did start to kind of venture up into that middle groove. So uh, that's kind of what I was focusing on. And hopefully, you know, that'll pay off uh, this weekend if, I, if, I, if I'm correct. And I think we need to stick in that, that bottom groove and that's where the speed is. So we're going to try to tune our car into that. Um, and then your second question, just so I, was, so I don't forget exactly what you asked, was just you know, coming from West Virginia, what got me – into racing yes sir um it, it, a really short way of, of explaining a long story is you know obviously coming from west virginia i lived on a farm lived in the mountains and i i had a four-wheeler and you know it's obviously really easy to to find ways to race and ramp and all that stuff in the mountains so i wanted to be a supercross racer i saw that on tv i thought that was really cool and um you know eventually i ended up getting a go-kart my parents got me a go-kart start racing and and that's what kind of took it to the the circle track stuff and um you know my competitive nature took over at that point and it just kind of stayed on the sit on the car side of things and away from the, the dirt bikes 
and that's what got me started and I've just loved it ever since. That's pretty unique, man. What did you, what did you do? You do a four wheeling or around Southern West Virginia or just in a wheeling area or? Yeah, I, you know, I was really young when I, when I was doing the four wheeler stuff and it was, I never actually had a dirt bike. I just wanted to eventually do that. And uh, just around wheeling, we went to a couple of, of local fairs. I think we might have went to one in Ohio as well, Eastern Ohio. So uh, nothing, nothing crazy. I didn't really get very seriously into it until I got into the go kart stuff. Um, Travis, talk a little bit about how your uh, your studies at West Virginia University in aeronautical and mechanical engineering helps out your racing. Yeah, those are two questions I forget about a lot now that I'm starting to get older and, you know, I'm not obviously working in the field necessarily with those degrees, but they do, you know, very directly apply to what I do. And, um, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't say this in a bragging way, but I'm a lot more hands-on than, than most drivers. Um, that's actually where I am right now. I'm at our team's race shop and we've been kind of staying here for a couple of weeks while we've been racing all over the country and I help in the shop. So um, I do think it helps, you know, I'm able to communicate more of the technical information to my crew chief and my team, which kind of picks up some of the, the gap because we are a smaller team. So, you know, we can kind of keep up with those bigger teams with more resources and information just because I'm able to kind of decipher things a little bit more quickly and, and more in depth. Um, so it, without getting too technical, you know, I, I, I love that side of motorsports as much as I do the driving. You know, it's a thrill to me to make a car go fast, both behind the wheel of it and, it, you know, in the race shop. Uh, we have another question here uh, that was submitted. Um, from the seat of your pants, how do you describe a lap around Bristol Motor Speedway in a late model car? Pressure is, is the literal word I would use because um that's that's just it you know we like i said we go really really fast here with these cars and um you know the corner speed with the banking is just incredible you know i don't know what the actual g-force load is but it has to be you know three four or five g's i don't know what it could possibly be but um that that's the most incredible part of it you know you really start to get some distortion with your vision initially when you first get in the car uh which eventually goes away once you get kind of get used to it but it, that's that's what's so unique about Bristol. You know, you're you're not off the gas very long, if at all, with with the pro late models. Um, that's pretty unique, and you know, you got to have a lot of guts to drive into the corner and say, "Man, I'm I'm going pretty fast, and I'm going to rely on this thing to stick, and the tires are not going to break or blow out, and the car is going to stay in one piece." You know, you have a lot of faith in what's going on around you, and so there's a lot of pressure, both figuratively and literally, on your on you and your body and your brain. Um, last question, unless uh, Heather or Alan have anything else, um, but what are your expectations for the weekend? I, I look forward to it. I think it's going to be a great event. Um, I know there's a lot of different, you know, people coming from all over, all over the country, probably even some different countries if they can get here right now. So um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully everyone stays safe. You know, that is a, that's a big thing that's, that's on our minds in a, in a weekend like this because of how dangerous this could be. So um, hopefully a lot of fun. I think we're going to see some exciting racing and hopefully for me, hopefully at least one new winner that hasn't won before here and uh, you know, some, some thrills when it comes to all that. All right, man. Well, we appreciate your time. Uh, Heather and Alan, you, are you both good? Yeah, we appreciate it, Travis. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, yeah I'm good. Thank you, thank you so much for your time. All right, man. Absolutely. Well, good luck. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you out there on uh, Saturday at the track and maybe Friday during practice. All right. Yeah. If you guys are all at the track at any point, be, be, be sure to come by and say hi. Thank you. All right, Travis. Thanks a lot. Thank you.